Welcome to Healing Generations, a podcast creating a dialogue uplifting the importance of healing, strengthening, and supporting our communities, and that addresses the disparities and inequities in communities of color. Healing Generations is brought to you by the Healing Generations Institute, a collaborative initiative of the National Compadres Network and the Brotherhood of Elders. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on our new releases. I say welcome to you. This is Jerry Teo with the uh, Healing Generations Institute. And on behalf of the National Compadres Network and the Brotherhood of Elders, I'd like to welcome you to uh, this podcast, Healing Generations. Our whole focus is on healing um, generations of pain, of woundedness, but also healing the generations of uh, injustice and and inequality. But more than anything, um, nurturing and regrounding and uh, revitalizing the medicine and the ancestral wisdom and the ancestral teachings that uh, all of us carry within us. If we can bring that to the forefront and let that be our mantra, let that be uh, our go-to, let that be really uh, our path towards uh, healing uh, our communities, healing our families, and healing uh, this nation and this world. So we're really... Um, Pleased that uh, that you joined us again today. Uh, hopefully, you've been listening to our podcast, and and um, our whole goal is to really bring wisdom keepers and healers and teachers and uh, advocates uh, to begin a dialogue, to begin a discussion, and and uh, we'll have people with different uh, viewpoints, different history, different experience, all to add. You know, and and the way we see it is, you know, when I grew up. We'd go visit somebody and my mom would take a plate and we'd take a plate in there and then you take what you want, take what's good for you, take uh, take what you feel like taking and, and what nourishes you and leave the rest there. And we ask you to do that too. Uh, whatever is good for you here, whatever nourishes your soul and your spirit, we invite you to take and, and leave the rest. And, uh, and we continue learning as we go along as well. So we began uh, last week with a conversation with Maestra Concha Salcedo, an elder wisdom keeper, healer, an icon in our community, and you know, she began talking to us just about her journey, her journey as a, um, as a healer, as a leader, as a, and the history uh, that she, um, she had to journey through in order to get to uh, where she was at and the teachings that she gives. And uh, this week, we will continue that conversation to listen to, to the, that, that interview that I had with her. Uh, what a blessing just to be with her uh, during that time. But uh, we left off last time um, her mentioning um, the feeling of anger and the state of being in anger. Um, and I know that, you know, right now the, there's, there's a lot of feelings and one of them is anger for the injustice and for uh, the, the brutalization that has been done to our people and to uh, the, uh, just to who we are and... and uh, and to people of color and those people that are uh, disenfranchised populations, and uh, so there's a lot of lot of feelings, but one of them is anger. And, and we left off by asking her, so how did you transform that anger? Because she talked about that she was angry for a while and uh, transformed it into love. And so I'm eager uh, to play this and to to hear her, but uh, I invite you to to open your hearts and open your minds as we listen to uh, Maestra. Uh, Concha Salcedo. How did I get? Yes, I was out in the street like this. And I was good. I mean, I wasn't, it was like theater to me. It was like drama, you know. It's a fuerza that it came from that. And now as you asked me, I said, I, I think the greatest energy comes from love. And how did that happen? It took a long time. And I was telling you, uh, maybe uh, 20 years ago, I was still angry, but I could modulate it better. <clears throat> but then I was asked by um, a relative of my family, that's a sister, uh, if I would come and do a weekend workshop for the Latino sisters and the African-American sisters because they were having trouble in their order because they could, they felt they couldn't worship the way they wanted to. 
uh, you know, singing the songs that they were accustomed to, different things. So at first I thought, I don't want, I don't want to do that because I had not, I had negative memories of going to school with those nuns, and I, I didn't want to be around them. And then, well, this is a family member, right, that's asking you. So I said, well, maybe it's time to do that. And <clears throat> when I went to this workshop, I, you know, talked about cultura, uh, cultura cura, talked about our values and different things. And they had placed a very old sister next to me who was hard of hearing. And then I was talking about the experiences I had had as a, as a young person and what had happened to children in the school. And she started to cry. And I, oh, you know, what did I say or do here? And then she said, I, if I had known what you talked about, I would have done things differently with the children. She was from Los Angeles. So I imagine she was talking about um, <clears throat> Chicano children. And so that kind of opened something in me. It kind of, it healed something because she was so authentic. She was so authentic. And she didn't know any better. You know, she was a little old white nun and she had learned what they all had learned or had been taught or had uh, tried to make sense of what she saw and made sense of it in a different way. And that was about 20 years ago. So from that time on, uh, it softened me up again. It, you know, I'm saying softened me up in the sense that you can have, you have strength, but it's uh, mellow, it's soft, it's like jello. It can... Uh, I love Jello, <laughs> Arturo Carrillo, that song that he, we do with drumming. Um, so, uh, yeah, it brought me to, and, and the more I explore my own experience and how I'm feeling now, uh, that I just, I feel good. Mm. You know, I feel feliz, happy. And I say that comes from feeling love. And I'm fortunate that I have family all around me and uh, good comadres, compadres, young people who seek me out. I, I, enjoy, I enjoy young people a lot. You know, teenagers and early 20s. Um, you know, I had my, I'm reminded of one who called me up once and says, can I come and chop it up? And I go, what are you going to chop up? <laughs> oh, can you explain it to me? He just laughed and laughed. And uh, he had had a very, very difficult life. And, <clears throat> and now he's in such a good place. But the other thing was it wasn't just me working with him. It was a group of people all really giving him love, showing him what he, that he could love. You know, through, through experiencing love that someone gives you, uh, regardless of what, you learn to, to love yourself. So... Um, it's a slow process uh, because it's so easy nowadays to be angry because there are things that are hurtful and harmful that are going on in all over the world. Wow, what some beautiful teachings. Uh, the Maestra really uh, talks a lot about not only about how we, uh, how the powerful energy of love, of that love is really the most powerful healing energy. But also, you know, begins to talk about um, a mantra that we uh, it'd be important for us to uh, to incorporate in our spirits. That we have to, you know, build that that mantra of that we are uh, important, that we are loved, that we are sacred, that we are a blessing. That we must say that to ourselves and and fortify ourselves, if you will, uh, to build our our energy and our our spirit and our aura. Because we often live in a world that, that uh, doesn't give us those messages of, of beauty and love and recognize our sacredness and recognize our medicine. So the Maestra talks about that, but she also talks about how the woundedness sometimes can get into, uh, you know, our relationships, our male-female relationships, and, and, and um, how, you know, it's important for us to, um, to even release and cleanse from, from wounded ways in order that we can recapture um, those ways that are sacred uh, to who we are, and sacred to to our uh, 
to the essence of, of who we are. So let's uh, let's continue the dialogue and continue the listening as, as the Maestra talks to us, you know, uh, just about that uh, development and recovering and and even to this this to, we ask her the question about what what are the messages you would uh, want to share or uh, next generations of grandchildren uh, to carry on, you know, what is what is important in that and she shares some very powerful teachings that way. I want all grandchildren to enjoy their lives and to enjoy their grandparents for what their grandparents bring with them. That all, I think all grandparents have a vision and have um, something to offer their grandchildren, except people don't communicate too much anymore with, with all the apparatos, right? And for, I would ask the grandchildren to really look at your grandparents and reach out to them. Have a conversation with them. Ask them about their life. Because we like to talk about our lives and what we're learning. And in doing so, the relationship will be strengthened. And they will ask you questions and they will learn, you know, from that. And, you know, what I, what I want for all children is to have a good life, a healthy life and to have a lot of love in their life. And to find that, you have to love. They themselves have to love themselves and others and all the plants and all the trees and all the dogs and all the cats and all the animals. Because they also give, you know, we forget the, the, what we call pets have a spirit. And sometimes we are imponiendo. I, I don't like to see animals all dressed up, you know, because they don't do that. They already have their, their fur, their skin. They, they don't have to bother with that. Um, you know, there, there, there's so much, but really, I, I'll quote a, uh, a Tibetan proverb, right, that uh, when Tibetans were asked, and, and I feel there's a lot of parallel between the Tibetan philosophy and our own, in terms of how to be in the world, and when asked, you know, how do you live a, a good and healthy life? The answer was, eat half what you eat, walk twice what you walk, laugh thrice what you laugh, and love without measure. I think, para nosotros, el amor no tiene color. El amor no tiene color. And sometimes, and it, and love, and say to the grandchildren, don't put conditions on your love. Or I would say that to men, right? Don't, you know, if you uh, wear your hair this way, or if, you know, some men are very controlling. They want to change the woman. Well, changing the woman means they don't love the woman as she is. So then we have to love ourselves as we are and then try to make ourselves better if we want to be better. Um, and I, I really I think grandchildren should, or all children should talk more. It's, you know, they get a certain age and they don't want to talk to the adults or to the elders. They did when they were little, you know, uh, so they can do it again. There's so much to gain, so much laughter, so much wonder. I think the other thing I would say, um, don't lose wonder. You know, look up at the sky. You know, on a day like this in San Francisco, look up at the sky, it's beautiful. There may be clouds floating around and it's beautiful. You know, don't lose, because that wonder then gives us, uh, nourishes our spirit. You know, it's uh, it, never boring. People ask me sometimes, you know, now that you've retired, well, I, I've never retired from anything. I mean, I left a particular position, but I retire? No. You know, I'm eager. What's, what's the next project? When, what can I get into? You know, uh, when, where can I sing and dance? You know, that's uh, what I loved uh, going to work at Instituto, that I could be myself. Literally, and sing and dance, literally. 
and tell bad jokes, <laughs> right? And there'd always be someone to laugh. So, you know, what, what legacy, what... It's like just live your life fully with care and live your life in such a way that um, you care for others and, and using care in that way of meaning love and that you show that to others and that you find ways to express it. In this the final segment, I'm asked that you know, really um, enforces the significance of, of, of healing. And uh, she says, because sometimes uh, those wounds can turn to anger and they can turn to hate. So she quotes this uh, Tibet, Tibetan philosophy that says, uh, eat half as much. You know, and we're a consumption society that sometimes eat too much. And she says, walk twice as much, you know, and, and that uh, in that walking, for some people, that is also uh, meditation and prayer. And then she says, uh, laugh three times as much, right? And that laughter and that joy and that pleasure. And that's why in many of our cultures, we like to dance, we like to party, we like to, to, to joke, and we like to have fun because that's medicine too. And she reminds us that even in the struggle, even in our healing, even you know, in, in this tough time, that we need to make room for that laughter, for that joy, um, for the dance, for the singing. Um, you know, it, when I think back, I think we, we, you know, when I'm with uh, the Babas and the Brotherhood of Elders and Baba Greg begins to play those drums, you know, I, there's a vibration that begins to stimulate. And it's not just the drum beat. It's a vibration that is, you know, really generations old. And when he begins to chant, I feel uh, the energy of, of that chant that is, you know, generations old. And, and, and we begin to feel the spirit. So we know that laughing and playing and dancing, the danza, the music, the art is important. And then she shares the teaching in love uh, without measure. Uh, y no tiene color. It doesn't have color. It has no boundaries. So, you know, Maestra shares with us uh, the importance of that and uh, of healing ourselves and, and knowing how to release, how to let things go when it's necessary to let them go. Because holding on to toxicity too long can then, it becomes part of you. And so we want to have these met methods uh, to be able, and our culture and, and, and our traditions can help us that way. This last segment, uh, Maestra, really just focuses on healing, just uh, just on and that the important part of healing, um, uh, the central part of, of of the work that we do, is on healing. And so let's uh, let's listen and see uh, this uh, parting advice that she gives us. Well, first of all, make sure you have healed those wounds that they they may not uh, the cicatrices may not be there yet, uh, but if you know you have wounds, you have to be careful that those wounds don't become the filter for you. And to take care of yourselves. Because, and I mean physically as well as emotionally and spiritually, because uh, when we're not feeling well, our energy will be disturbed and out of balance. So that if we're going to do any kind of um, action that is a healing action, whether it's a temescal or a limpia, make sure that you're okay, that your mind is okay, uh, that your heart is okay, because in that process, you will be taking on or what the person is feeling. And so then you have to know how to release that so it doesn't stay with you. Um, and, sometimes, and, and to recognize that sometimes you can't do it. And depending how, you know, strong or, you know, how, however your feelings are, but it, that it's okay. That we aren't um, like magicians, you know, that we can turn it on. And that we need that time. Sometimes we do so many things and they're all in that relationship of healing with a lot of other people. And one becomes depleted of energy. So it's important to have someone that you can go with to or a place that you can go, you know, sit under the tree just to feel that energy, to replenish that energy. And sometimes because we're so committed and dedicated 
and someone asks for help uh, and they're desperate, you feel you have to do it immediately, but sometimes we can't. And then we have to say, okay, who else might be able to do this? And be open enough to recognize that I'm not the only one. Or to work in, t in tandem with people. I do work with other women, some of the Mayan women that are here, or other women who are on this path as, as well. And uh, we get together informally, not, you know, meetings with agenda, but just to apoyar or to ask each other questions and what, what can I do in the situation? Um, what should I not do? I love those things because we're all fallible. You know, what a blessing um, to be able to listen to an elder um, that has walked um, this path, has walked this journey and faced the challenges, but still um, at 85, you know, I'm visiting her. Um, when you walk in her presence, uh, you feel light. You feel that love. You feel that energy, and and uh, and it was such a blessing just to be there with her, um, to see, see that uh, la cultura cura, that healing energy manifested, and I believe we have uh, elders like that in every community. You know, they're they're not recognized. We have you know grandmas and big mamas and and aunties and even uncles and grandfathers too, because the males carry that energy too. You know, and 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 they're in every community. And one of the things that is important for us to to strive to do is to recognize them and acknowledge them. And sometimes their blessing is just a greeting. You know, um, but it's difficult in these times that you know you sometimes all you see in people are or is their frustration or their anger. We don't uh, really recognize. Um, you know, that underneath the anger and the frustration and sometimes the intolerance because people get tired. A lot of people are just tired of the injustice and tired of the racism, you know. And I think back of, you know, um, of my mom, you know, as, as I mentioned before, you know, I grew up uh, in, in Compton and um, and we grew up in an era where, you know, I, I, was, uh, I was in school, high school, when the, the first uh, uprisings happened in the, in the 60s. And so I um, felt the anger, and I felt the the injustice, and and I saw the burning buildings and the and the looting, and and then National Guard came and they they posted themselves in our in our neighborhoods, and there was a tank right there on the corner of my house, and had people with AK forty sevens just standing out there posting up, and we go to school, they'd mad dog us and. And you know, intimidate us, and they intimidate the girls, and so all that energy that you felt, you know, uh, um, it didn't help us. It didn't make us feel more safe. It, it, it really, uh, you know, scared us more. And but uh, one of the things that 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 did happen is that my mom, you know, she she owned a cleaners. Uh, she was a you know, she had a cleaners there, and in, in in would call Watts right there in near Manchester and Broadway. And my mom, you know. Uh, I remember as a young kid getting ready to go to school, my mom would be up early in the morning, five, six o'clock in the morning. She'd get up and she'd begin cooking, cooking, you know, fresh beans and rice and tortillas, fresh tortillas, and then making chile verde or carne asada. And, and I remember getting up and saying, Mom, what are you doing? Why are you up so early? Oh, I got to cook. Why do you got to cook? Well, I got to take food to the, to the, to the cleaners. Why? Go, oh, because well, people are, they want to eat and want, you know. And I'm thinking, why are you giving them food? You know, I mean, I was, I was a young kid. You know, you taking the food, man, I want to leave some here for me. And, and I was a kid, man, I was, you know, youngster, didn't know all these teachings and all of that. And uh, she said, ah, be quiet. And and she'd go and, you know, go to work. And I, after school, I'd, I had to go to the cleaners to help work and be a presser in the cleaners there. And I'd walk in, you know. And there'd be people there in the back, you know, and and and, uh, and you could tell that some of them were, you know, were disheveled, homeless, and uh, and, and one of the person you knew dealt drugs, and another was a minister, and they're all sitting there in the back. And I was telling mom, why do you let these people in the back in our shop? They're going to steal our clothes. They're going to. She says, hey, don't worry, they're my friends. They're my fr no, but they're going to rip off. And I, you know, I'm thinking, trying to take care of my mom, I worry about my mom, and you know, and but she had a whole different view. You know, she would feed them burritos and give them whatever they ate, whatever they wanted to eat, and. 
And I said, Mom, they're just taking advantage of you. Ah, be quiet. You don't understand nothing. And so she would do this. And but you know, the the the, the riots happened and uh and uh, and they were burning buildings and all on the block where my mom's cleaners was and and um we were watching on the news all those buildings burning, and my mom began to cry because she says they're going to burn the shop down, and I'm not going to be able to feed you guys. How what am I going to do? How am I going to support you know us? And she began to cry, and she was very sad. And you know, and, and uh, she says, well, maybe maybe they won't burn my 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 machine, my sewing machine. Maybe if I can just get, I can bring it home and do work from here. And you know, mom trying to think and strategize. This single mom at that time. My dad had you know already passed on, and. Well, a few days passed, and finally, you know, the the burning and the looting had stopped, and they allowed us to go back uh, in that area. And we, my mom says, "Well, let's go. Let's see what I can get. What, what, what what's left? Maybe my machine machine is left." And uh, so we drove over there, and uh, my mom drove, and I was there with her. And and as we approached, you know, her block, we saw all these buildings, you know, burned and looted and torn up and everything like that. And so we approached there and got to the block where her shop was. She she looked over and and she looked at me and 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 then she parked in front and and my mom's cleaners wasn't burnt. And she says, "Look, look, they didn't burn." And she got out and I got out and we went to the front door and she went to unlock the front door and there was a, a piece of paper on the on the door that was taped on there, and it said, uh, "Thank you, Miss Jesse, for feeding us and for loving and taking care of us." And my mom began to cry. And she looked at me and she said, yes, you see, they're good people. They take care of me. They take care of me. And I learned a very big lesson that day. That underneath the anger and the frustration, you know, are good people. That all they want is someone to honor them and acknowledge them and feed them. But to see them. And underneath that is they will take care of you and they will love you. I learned from my mom that we're all as one. And later on in my culture, I learned in the Mayan language, in La Quech, tu eres mi otro yo, you are my other me, where you hurt, I hurt, where you heal, I heal. Uh, we're interconnected that way. So today we are in, you know, we're in mourning for a lot of people that have died and, you know, because of COVID-19, but we're also in mourning because of, you know, the our brothers and sisters that, that have died to uh, police violence and to all the relatives that are mourning that, but also many of us are in mourning because of the injustice, you know, tired. People are tired and many people are angry too. But that interconnectedness is what's going to get us through. The interconnectedness of, of us walking together and speaking truth together and fighting together, but loving together and healing together. So we thank you for joining us. You know, we want to acknowledge you and everything that you do, all those, especially the youngsters, the young ones that are out there protesting and, and uh, you know, sharing voice and sharing truth for all those advocates that are out there that have done it for years, for those elders those uh, that have been, you know, really carrying this justice flag for many generations. You know, we thank all of you and those that are the first responders and uh, that are in hospitals or places of care, but also the farm workers and the people that are feeding us and the people that are taking care of us and keeping us safe as well. We thank all of you. And for those of you that are healing and caring for those uh, for those people, the, the healers and the caretakers, we thank you. Let me remind you to take care of yourself and love yourself and honor yourself and take some time for yourself, you know. And as we go on this journey, we're, we're all healing together. We're all healing, but uh, let us not forget to... to uh, to enjoy life too, to take time to laugh. And that's why we like to party and dance because that's part of the healing. Use that music, use those songs, use those rhythms, use those prayers, use those rituals to heal yourself and fortify yourself because uh, our goal is to heal generations. But it also is so that the next generations have more blessings and more beauty and love themselves more and have less pain and struggle. Thank you all and many blessings to you. Ometeo. For more information about Healing Generations and the Healing Generations Institute, visit nationalcompadresnetwork.org 
and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with our new releases.